Now you're welcome along. We are very happy to say that we have, well, the story of the weekend in many ways with us. Cavan Pear, Raymond Galligan, the captain. We have Podrick Faulkner as well, sporting a very nice November tash. I mean, what a week. Everything's going on, Podrick. Uh, congrats. Amazing. Well done. So um, you're both very welcome. Quite a few days, Raymond. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, Yeah, no, it's been, it's been fantastic for the last two days, I suppose, just all the goodwill and uh, just... You know, it's really only starting to hit home now today. Um, you know, the achievement that we've that we've done. So yeah, it's been fantastic. Podrick, I'll get to the match and obviously the build up to the match. But what about Sunday evening and yesterday? Because I know in pre COVID times what you'd all be doing. What are you doing in twenty twenty? Uh you know, just the strange times call for strange measures. Um it was nice. We lifted the cup in Breffney. Um it was nice to get it back to there. And then we had a bit of a, a car parade in Breffney which held people up for three, four hours to Sunday night. It was absolutely mad. There was miles of traffic and people waited three and four hours just to see us on a lorry. <laughs> so it, it's, it's fantastic. We were, we're, we're still coming to terms with it. So yeah. how does that work? Do people sit in their cars and wait for you to drive by? Is that what it is? The opposite way around, they drive by and we sit in the lorry. <laughs> 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 so that's the, so you just wave at the cars going by. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that is not what you're dreaming of growing up. <laughs> ah, it's something to it's something for kids to remember. It was it was more for them and and it's 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 how else you're going to see the county team that won the Ulster title? I think people are going to do anything just to <laughs> to to get to see us, family members, everything. So that's yeah, just the way it had to go. I guess it is, Raymond, nice for you to at least have some kind of contact with the public, even if it is you lads sitting on a lorry, which, by the way, this is hilarious, the image I have. This is like something out of Father Ted and them gone by in a car. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. Like, it was mad. It, was, it was great fun. You know, we were all in great form and, uh, you know, there was people hanging out windows and flags and air horns and everything going as uh, each cow was nearly trying to outdo the the one previous so there was so it was great fun and uh but it was great you know it meant so much to us because um like that as Porik said like there was such tailbacks uh miles and miles of traffic and like for people to to you know come out and uh and make the effort to see us like it was really heartwarming for for us players so um it was great yeah well, I guess it's a good way of doing it as well because, you know, we are living in times where we all have to be so careful. And even I think it was you, Raymond, and a couple of the players talked about how difficult a time Cavan has had when it comes to COVID. I mean, the last thing any of you would want on the back of this great day is somebody to fall ill. Absolutely. Absolutely. And and like that, you know, it was, um, you know, we alluded to it previous about the, in regards to the COVID. And I suppose now it's just such how such so nice to have a positive story coming out of Calvin and mm. you know I think that we really embraced that over the last week you know or the fans got behind us online and and um, such joy on the night after the game was uh, was just brilliant so Podrick what's your family situation have you family that you could spend Sunday and yesterday with or family that you couldn't spend Sunday and yesterday with so um look at it we 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 um we lifted the cup in front of our family and that that's all that we wanted to do. Um, I've had more phone calls to friends and family. They're, they're, the, the texts are coming in as fast as they're getting out. Um, it, it's tough to keep up with the pace, but just mm. everyone, everyone is, is so happy for us, family included. You know, they're the ones that we, that we grow up playing football with and different things like that. And it was just, it was really for them that day as well. It, mm. um, it, it it's it's such a nice feeling to spend it with them. Yeah. What about you, Raymond? Were you able to see people or other people you couldn't see? Because I guess, like, the one thing you want to do at that moment is give everyone a hug. Yeah, absolutely. Like that, we, as Corey said, like, we got the, our families uh, to be able to come into Breffney Park um, and be able to stand on the pitch and watch us uh, lifting the cup. And, um, no, it was lovely like that. And I suppose I've... I've been. I was very fortunate the way I I, I married a Donegal woman, so uh, <laughs> it's uh, we've we've had a good uh, banter over the last couple of days. We haven't spoken for the last two days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Sorry by the end of the week. <laughs> <laughs> you want you want lots of Zoom calls with the in-laws this week. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, so I didn't realize that. So they got your families into Brefney, where I guess they can socially distance, and then you lift the cup in front of them. Oh, that's a great idea. Magic. Yeah. yeah. Wives, yeah. girlfriends. It was it was just it was it made it special, you know. Yeah. And everyone was socially distanced, stand on a pitch, and it just they're they're the real ones you want beside you anyway when you're doing something special like that. Mm. And it was it was just lovely. It was it was a real nice feeling. Yeah, that's very emotional because there's a great atmosphere with that, and there's a real intimacy about it as well. Yeah. yeah, and also we had, um, you know, being only the 26 guys that are able to tug out, it gave the lads outside of the panel um, mm. on that day to be able to be there and see us lifting them for the first time as well, like, you know, because it was such a And it's very, it's very harsh then on them mm. lads that's training all year that don't get to the games, you know. Mm. Um, it just, it, it, it brings them in into the mix too on, on the, the electric atmosphere that does come with it too, not sitting yeah. at home. Yeah, like it's one of those things I wouldn't, I couldn't make the argument, oh, they absolutely should be there when they don't technically need to be. But geez, it's brutal. Like, and I'm sure today or tomorrow isn't the day they'll be talking about it. But there'll be a couple who were, clo who were close to being in the 26 and sitting on the couch. It won't have been a good day for them, you know, and, and when the full time whistle went, they'll have had very mixed feelings. I mean, that's that's so tough. I guess at least they got the breath me thing, but it is tough. Yeah, I, 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 do, I, I don't think they ever let their emotions showed that, that they were annoyed. Like we were, they were the first men that was straight up to us when they came back. Um, I've been on panels where I've been dropped and different things like that, or you didn't get a jersey some days. And they were the first men straight up to you congratulating you. And right. they, 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 it was, it meant as much to the, us as it meant to them. So it, yeah. it was, it was really nice. Yeah. And with all the families there, would you guys like, would you know each other's, partners and, and parents like do they get a chance to mix down the years or is it almost like you, you wouldn't know who's who half the time um no well i think we would we'd, we'd have a, a fair idea i suppose just through the club scene calvin club scene it's it's it is very tight-knit kind of communities and uh, uh no we would we definitely all be kind of know know each other's families and that not really that well um but i suppose we you know that's a winning those um on days like that that uh, i suppose we, unfortunately we haven't had many days like this and um hopefully we'll definitely have lots more to come well for sure and like you know again i know you've more important matters at hand but there'll be the 10-year anniversary and you'll probably get together in 20 years and all that kind of stuff that's the great thing i guess you know 97 cavan is just this thing in the county i mean when you say 97 you're only talking about one thing it must be amazing, Raymond, to now be a little bit of part of history, you know? I mean, again, I hope there are more Ulster titles to follow and it's not another 23 years. But suddenly now when people mention the team of 2020, God, to be part of that's an amazing thing. Yeah, absolutely. Like, it's just, it, it's really only today, it's kind of sinking in that, you know, we have, uh, we have, uh, you know, changed changed the, the, the landscape of, of uh, what's, of Calvin football um, and yeah, no, it's it's fantastic, and hopefully, it's really going to help, uh, you know, players and 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 people who in the clubs to really get behind Calvin and you know, try and get themselves back in and the, mm. uh, play for Calvin over the coming years because like uh, it's an exciting time to be a, a Calvin footballer, and hopefully, like it's going to make the younger generation really want to to play for their county. Yeah, what age were you in '97, Raymond? Uh, ten. So you'd remember it reasonably well, I'd say. Yeah, yeah, to a degree. It was just it was crazy. The yeah. illness that day it was just crazy. The pitch just surrounded up like blue and white, so, mm. on, so it was mad. Faulkner, what age are you? I was only three. I wouldn't remember. <laughs> all I can remember is just the jersey I was wearing that day and a few pictures. That's nice. That's all I can remember from that. Because with your moustache, you look about 43 at the moment, so it's hard to tell. <laughs> Yeah, I grew it, so I'd stop getting asked for ID when I'm, I'm buying drinks. <laughs> so it, I presume it's a November thing. So, I mean, does it stay now as a lucky charm into December? It's hard to know as a team. I mean, Tyrone uh, turned up with beards a few years back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's staying. Yeah, that's it. That's, that's it. It's the new look. <laughs> uh, lucky moustache. No, <laughs> so it'll be the first thing that's gone at the end of November. <laughs> All this mask wear now, it just it doesn't suit. <laughs> oh yeah, masks and a tash is worse again, I'd say. <laughs> so come here, look, I was, uh, hands up, I was one of many who said, well, Donegal, that's that. No, no chance, like no chance. So yeah. um, 
there were obviously things I missed in the, the, the you know, the brilliant comeback against Monaghan and to do it again against Down and, and grinding it out against Dantram. And like, you've come through so many games with the preliminary rounds. So I'm guessing, Raymond, when I looked at those matches and casually assumed, okay, lack of quality, they're squeaking through, you know, they're getting lucky or whatever. What was actually happening were you, la you lads were building some kind of bond through those games, I suspect now. Yeah, absolutely. That was the thing. Like, we knew after we, we beat Monaghan that... Uh, um, it was, you know, there was a massive opportunity here, but like that, um, we only took it game by game. Um, and we knew, I suppose, by the time we got to play Donegal, um, it was well documented we needed a massive performance for 70 minutes because we had played in, in patches in all the games. But uh, we knew we'd done so much right over the last three games that if we got a complete performance, that we would definitely, uh, be you know there thereabouts right. um the time nearly up so yeah it was just it was just one of them complete performances mm. and we definitely believed um we could do it and i think that was key oh, during the week we really believed yeah so podrick when the, the good patches were there they were really good and they were obviously right. quality so it was, it was just a case usually, of usually the second half <laughs> yeah what's that about i mean i'm sure you're wondering <laughs> yourself some days Ah, uh, we, we have the bookies rigged. You know, <laughs> I bet the other team half time and we'd come in at full time. Because it's a weird thing. No, no team says them uh, to, says to each other in the huddle. Let's try and get off to a bad start here. Like it's the biggest cliche in the book. We need to get off to a good start. So it's like it's not like yeah. you were you weren't thinking about the start. It it just one of those things. I, I think it was. We we were maybe overthinking things sometimes. Like at half time we had to have a chat with ourselves and say, what is going wrong here? Why aren't we doing the things that we said we'd set out to do? Mm. And it was just a matter of just doing those things in the second half and completely turn the game on <laughs> upside down. Um, I felt we were, we always were prepared going into all those games. Just the slow start was just killing us. Mm. The game was amazing on Sunday. I mean, it, 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 like Tipperary, it's extraordinary what they did, but in a way, they were just comprehensive winners and led from most of the game. Whereas you fellas were on a bit of a roller coaster. Like so, so many moments. Like the, you, you lose a man to a black card, and in that ten-minute period in the first half, Donegal score seven points. So you know what the whole country was thinking when the second black card arrived. Like that's going to tilt it. And then I, I'm I'm kind of curious for your thoughts, Raymond, on the other end of the pitch when you're creating goal chances. There was one that was dragged low, left and wide. There was a great save from the keeper the other time. So that's a good thing, but equally, you're not taking these goal chances. I mean, you must have been looking at each other at the other end saying, Jesus, we need to take one of these. Yeah, no, absolutely. Like, to be honest, um, you know, we when we went into the final quarter, uh, that water break, we knew we had we had it because uh, we knew that the lads were still feeling fresh um, and we were right in the game because I suppose we had played there the week before and, and we were comfortable shooting into them goals and we were kind of just very confident, could sense it. Um, but definitely when they missed them couple of goal chances, I remember saying to the umpire, I was like, is there extra time or is there a replay if this um, ends up a draw? Cause, and he was like, oh, Jesus, he's like, I'm not sure. Of course <laughs> he didn't know. Like, there's nothing sure in the world that that umpire wouldn't have known the answer to that question. Uh, yeah, yeah. It just, <laughs> um, but... Uh, yeah, so that that was my thing. I was thinking, Genie Mac, this could be a, could be a draw game, you know, because you're creating so many chances, and there was only one point so close to the end. But yeah, yeah thankfully we we pushed on and uh, got that goal, which you know really was the difference in the end. Yeah, God, that must have been a magic shot of adrenaline, Podrick, that goal going in. Oh, it it, it was the dead, the game dead and buried. Yeah. you know that's the feel, that's the feeling that you know, right? We we, we won here. I know there's no uh, the, the game's never over till the final whistle goes, but. You just that was just the, the icing on, on, on the cake. It was just the kind of last hurdle you had to get over before the finish line. Audrey, could you tell us a bit about Mickey Graham? I mean, uh, people will know what he did with Mullen Octa winning a Leinster Championship was borderline miraculous in 2018. So is he a big talker? Is he a man of few words? Is he an arm around the shoulder type and asking you about your family and how's life? Or is he a disciplinarian and strict approach? What's what's his way? He's, he's a bit of an all-rounder. Um, he 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 has serious aspects in all all of his management. He's he's the arm around the shoulder man. He's also the lad that will ring and give out stink when needed. Um, he he's he's an inspirational talker. Like he he really gets you um, driven up for a game before it. He he knows what to say in in the right times. Like 
he knows how to get some lads on the side from and and, and others in other ways. Um, he just he he he's, he refers then. He he really listens to his background staff um, and any management he has with him, and he he really takes on everything that's said, both players and manager and management as well on board. So he he's a real all rounder manager. Yeah, Raymond, what impact has he made for you? Oh, massive! Like you know, uh, as Porrick said, like he's he uh, he's all around. You know, approach to the players is just really is a uh, phenomenal. Like, and uh, I suppose like that, he's given massive ownership to the players. You know, like mm. it's he, he's always spoken about it being player led, and um, you know, he put the, the belief into us uh, over the last number of weeks, and you know, he is that way. Uh, it, uh, the, the way he has of making us believe um, that we are good enough and you know I think Sunday showed that you know mm. that belief really rubbed off him on us throughout the game And Raymond what were the broadly speaking what were the tactical points you guys were thinking about against Donegal? I suppose we we, we, um, we kind of learned from last year like we were so we uh, we probably over analysed Donegal um, and probably didn't put enough emphasis on ourselves um, and this week it was just really about ourselves playing uh, the best that we can um, mm. it wasn't the case that we were getting too worked up on matchups or who'd be marking who it was more about we just all do our job and we fully believed once we'd done that we'd, we'd be good enough on the day mm. Yeah well it worked out that's for sure How many weeks on the bounce now is that Podrick that you've played? Um, well we actually my club team got to a uh, the county final as well so that's actually but I think that could be 12 and 13 weeks maybe or uh, it's, it's right. so ridiculous like that anyway how are you feeling? Um, Grant <laughs> ready to go again <laughs> sure you're not doing uh, any running back there anyway no 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 this is, this is, yeah, it's only only short <laughs> little sprints there was actually one game one time we played a challenge match where Ray was in the goals and I was full back and I ran 26 metres more than him. So, <laughs> <laughs> those, and those he was fast. He, he did more sprints as well. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I catch him one day. So, yeah, you know, full, full backs, they can take the rest. So, yeah, it doesn't take too much. Those midfielders, the boy that does all the running, does she? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and Marty Riley's, they're the ones that's probably so. Yeah, she's 12 and 13, though. I'd say you're glad of a week's break anyway. Ah oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Glad we might get a challenge match next weekend. <laughs> <laughs> uh, have you? What? Well, correct. You, now, there's probably some obvious game I'm not thinking about here, uh, Raymond. Have you played a knockout championship at Crow Park ever before in, in your time? Um, I don't remember. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh no, because we played league finals there, but I did, did not get knocked out by Kerry one time. Oh yeah, sorry, in thirteen. Oh yeah. He's tried to yeah. forget that one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was the last time, yeah. This is a huge deal. It's funny, we had Mike Quirk on the leash manager last night and um with a bit of a grin on his face, but he sort of meant it as well. He was saying, Well, this game doesn't have to be a croaker. If the um cabin lad said, Well, we wanted a neutral venue, I mean it's not like we need capacity of croaker. We sh you know, he was a Newbridge or nowhere type um situation. Do you want Raymond to play a croaker? Or in an ideal world, would you prefer it to be tighter pitch neutral venue? Um, it really doesn't, but it's not something at all that's been spoken about or we've talked about. Um, so it really doesn't doesn't bother me. Like obviously playing in Co Park's lovely because that's where you always want to, to play. Um, and sure, look when you're playing uh, the Dubs, you know you might as well play them in Croker, like it's the biggest stage. So yeah, no, we're happy to play them wherever. To be honest, it's uh, it, it makes no difference. I live in Dublin, so sure I'll be. <laughs> Just took over the road. <laughs> <laughs> did you watch the Meath game on the Saturday night? I did, yeah. I looked, they were very, uh, it was a very comprehensive victory now, to be fair. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, look, we uh, we still um, fully believe like we're, we're going to give it a, a great shot. And look, if Donegal had the win last weekend, they would have been saying Donegal can beat Dublin. So I firmly believe we, uh, we're going to yeah. give it everything we got. Yeah, it's a fair point. I mean, people were saying a long way off Donegal are, are the, maybe the best chance of rattling the Dubs this year. So if you have the measure of Donegal, there's no reason you can't go up against um, the Dubs. Podrick, I was reading a couple of years, I don't know, I mean, it, it's strange times that we're living in. If you were going to the game, usually you'd be on a bus and probably just listening to music or chatting to each other. As it was, you were all in your cars. Were you one of those who was keeping an ear on the Munster final and, and kind of, I don't know, does it plant the seeds in some respect that it might be one of those weird days? 
Yeah, I, I was, and I, I got to watch, watch the first 15 minutes of the game too, so it kind of, Tip kind of always looked in control, um, and listening to the radio on the way up, and it does it does give you the, the drive that they're yeah. after doing it now, Let, let's us go out and, and, and make an upset too. Yeah. Um, and it did look, it, it, it's, we weren't, we weren't, we were written off, so we had nothing to lose playing that game. Uh, against Donegal so it, it was theirs to lose and we just wanted it more I just felt on the day yeah you certainly did well look it was amazing I mean I'll let you go I know you've got to kind of get the head down now and focus over the next few weeks and the training this evening but congratulations and um, I guess hopefully there's a vaccine next year you can celebrate it at some stage properly down the road but um, enjoy the experience of the next two weeks I'm sure the county will be going mad and you've got an All-Ireland semi-final to play in and you know all bets are off strange things can happen for sure so Raymond Galligan, Podrick Faulkner. Thanks so much, fellas. Well done. Thanks, Thanks very much. Thank you.